In this video, we will be taking a direction towards smart home devices. Special thanks to Sonov who sent me a device for review. This is the NS Panel Pro, a smart touchscreen panel running on Android. Well, this device is already in market for over a year, only now we are starting to see its full potential with new features being added by each update. This is mainly intended as a panel for in-wall use, but Sonoff also offers a docking frame to put this on a desk or a nightstand. This is meant to be a better version of the first NS panel, which had a smaller screen and two physical buttons to control the built-in switch relays. For some reason, the Pro version does not have this feature anymore, but this could be due to a technical limitation. So let's talk about hardware which is probably the most interesting part about the NS Panel Pro. Despite the main visible feature being a 4-inch touchscreen, it also packs a lot of wireless connectivity. This includes Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and most importantly, a built-in Zigbee hub for all your IoT devices. And now it also supports Matter with the latest update. The screen resolution is 480 by 480 and the brightness in the video is set to maximum for better visibility. It has 2 gigs of RAM as well as 8 gigs of built-in storage, but it will likely not matter much unless you decide to do some software hacking to take full advantage of it. For setup and management you will need the EVLink app which is the home for all son of devices. To begin you simply scan the QR code to pair it with your account. The main screen greets you with time, date, and outside temperature information, paired with dynamic weather background. If you have a camera configured, then you will also see the camera button here. In the middle you can trigger one of the three security modes, which will follow actions based on the way you have them configured. By dragging down the top bar, you get more options like pairing new Zigbee devices, adding new cameras, or you can choose between RTSP and DIY camera streams. You can also turn your old phone into a camera with the EVLink app to view it here. You can also change the theme, which basically means the home screen wallpaper. Let's go with the winter one. You can also add a custom wallpaper from the EVLink app, but this is as far as customization goes for the main home screen. Setting alarms and timers is also possible. In the settings you will find a bit more options, like changing Wi-Fi networks, pairing Bluetooth devices, for example speakers, seeing your linked account, and all other general settings, like system info. Pretty much like in a smartphone. So, to turn it up to 11, I bought a couple of friends to play with. A thermostat, human presence sensor, a button, and also their first matter enabled switch device. And if you don't have a neutral wire running to your switch box, then there is also an option for that. I also used some other devices I had laying around. With all of them paired, you will be able to access them on the devices screen. Here you can see my paired Zigbee devices like the kitchen and bathroom switches and also a presence sensor, which for example keeps the records of previous detections. To showcase you how the light controls work, I have synced some lights from my E-Light account. Here is a white lamp with temperature control. You can just drag around the selection dot like that. And an RGB light with color picker. As you can see that there is some delay. This is visible in the UI, but in reality, there is an even longer delay before the light actually turns on. There is a weird bug where the actual state of the synced light does not even reflect in the home screen, compared to a directly paired device. It is nice to have the advertised thermostat. Unfortunately, it seems that you cannot use the new radiator valve as an action device yet, which leaves you with a DIY option which can only use switches as action devices, 
and the need to access the heating controls manually. While the control screen looks the same, it is not the same thermostat from the home screen. But you get the idea. These are all likely software problems that can hopefully be fixed. But moving on, there are even more interesting features, one of them being the camera view. You can even use it for two-way communication, so it could make it a great intercom. Yes, you can also use the built-in microphone and speaker to make calls between the app and the panel, as well as panel-to-panel -panel calls if you have many of them. Don't forget to like and subscribe. As you can see, pretty useful for saying things. You can even watch YouTube videos with the one watt speaker using the web page function, if that is your thing. What we have here is the recently announced Galaxy Smart Tag 2 from Samsung. The Anis Panel Pro surely has more tricks up its sleeve than use cases you can think of. But what about the price? If you are watching this video at the time it was released, then there is still a Black Friday sale going on till December 10. So at around $78, it is pretty appealing. Most of their other products are on sale too. If you are interested, I have added links in the description below for all of the son of devices seen in this video. So to the conclusion. I have been trying to summarize my opinion for a couple of days about this device. These kind of products are always good for innovation, but the situation for Anas Panel Pro is quite complicated. See, Sonoff is a good hardware company, and a lot of users, including me, really enjoy the things they have built. And this device is no exception, hardware-wise. The software, however, is something where things are not catching up. Overall, this little panel is packed with features, but innovation is not always easy. Right now it looks more like a great DIY enthusiast product, so at this stage it may not be for everyone. The enthusiasts buying this are very likely to avoid EVLink experience altogether, in favor of something like Home Assistant. And it seems that Sonoff has realized this too, advertising the support for Home Assistant with their devices. It is certain now, the touchscreens are replacing regular switches and knobs, but for usability, it's still a long way to go.